It's officially here, the first HackG2 release that has SNES Classic support. Still, only about 75% of the games are working. You still might come through some bugs, things like that. But I definitely think it's at a point now that if you want to start hacking your SNES, it's going to be a lot easier than all of these pre-hacks that have been coming out these last few days. Um, this program will not only compress your ROMs for you, but it's going to support your ROMs. You can drag and drop and then clicking a button to transfer them all. So it's reduced the time from uh, 10 to 20 minutes per game to getting all the games you want for under 30 minutes of the hack. So here it is, there'll be a link in the description below, version 2.20. This is still not the final version. There's still some bugs, still some things going on. Like I said, it's the best they have right now, and it's been a huge jump from where we were a week ago. Uh, it now has the SNES Classic Mini Support. I'll show you that in just a second. It has automatic ROM conversion to special SNES Classic Mini format. So you can drag a ROM that's not in the correct ROM format, a, a, a dot .zip ROM, for example, and it'll automatically convert it for you. Um, individual profiles for different consoles so you can use the same hack G for both NES, SNES, and Famicom and Super Famicom. You can change that in the settings menu. It does have 7-zip compression support. Like I said, like a 2 megabyte game, you can get it down to just under 1 megabyte. So it's going to half the space you need to allow you to get hundreds of games instead of just, you know, less than 100. You now have group operations, so you can do multiple games at the same time, and you have some new bug fixes and things like that. As far as how to use this hack, just go ahead and download it here. I'll put a link in the description. Once you download Hack G2, you should have a folder here. Go ahead and drag it onto your desktop or somewhere else. Go ahead and double click it. And uh, as you can see, I already kind of started messing with this. But first thing to do is dump your stock kernel, where you'll have to make sure your power button is on, follow these instructions step by step. That will go ahead and back up your current setup. Now, uh, adding more games, you just go down here to the bottom left, go ahead and add more games. So here I am in my SNES, let's say I want three ninjas, I want, you know, super, I want most of the super games, so let's do all the S's. Syndicate all the way to, oh, we gotta have rock and roll racing, okay, open. So you can see it'll just process your games here, and this will take some time depending on how many games you've selected. Okay, the other great thing is you have up to 300 megabytes here, and uh, you can see that I have them as compressed right now. I can uncompress it, and you see it's about half. So here, hundred I can fit 166 games, and I'm only halfway. So you're going to get somewhere around 250, 300 games, no problem, on your SNES Classic. So you're going to be able to get about half the collection, which is plenty of games, trust me. Um, the other thing that should be configured that isn't all the way configured is the maximum amount of players. So some of this looks to be set now. It looks like a lot of these games are set up properly. But you might want to just double check that, that the maximum players is correct for that game. The other thing you're going to have to do is go through and get the uh, box art. So just go ahead and click on the game, go to Google, and it'll automatically search for these exact games. And you can choose whether you want flat box art or a picture. It's all up to you. I recommend using the box art because that's how the original SNES Classic is set up. There is a faster way where you can go ahead and hold shift here, right click, and then download box art for selected games. And that'll go ahead and do all that work for you. Once you have all your box art set up, you have your games, you do want to go ahead and set, change the way they are structured. So um, pages split games equally is a great way to go so they're all shown on the home page. But you might have to um, change that to folders, especially when you have this many games. You're gonna have different folders because if you have over 100 games, then you have to do folders. So you can experiment with this the way you like it to look, but the whole idea is how many games you want per folder or per subdirectory. And so you can mess with this. Make sure you set this before you sync. Once you have that, you have your players done, you have your box art, you have the games, they're compressed, you have everything, you backed up your stock kernel, go ahead and synchronize selected games, Go ahead and say yes here. It'll go ahead and flash the kernel. And then it'll ask you again, do you want to upload these ROMs? Press OK. And this whole process will continue. It will flash your SNES Classic to have this custom kernel on it with all these games you've now selected. And you're done. That's it. That's all you need to do. If you want to go ahead and set your computer back up to stock, your SNES Classic back to stock, just go back here, hook up your SNES Classic, go flash original kernel. That's all you got to do. So with that, I want to say thanks to Cluster for making this happen. There'll be a link in the description to get it. It's that easy to do. Just make sure you back up your stock kernel so if something does go wrong, you can change it. But there you go. 
add an additional 300 games to your SNES Classic. Very easy to do. And a new version of this will come out where it'll have a lot more features and a lot easier to use. But there you have it for now. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.